Hey everyone, welcome back. So today at the grocery store, I came across uh, what they called boneless beef finger meat. And it is essentially the muscle between the ribs on, on a cow. Um, and I've used it before for soups. Um, our beef and barley soup with this is absolutely amazing. So I thought, you know, temperature's a little bit colder. Let's make a stew. And the first step to making a stew is cutting it into chunks. And the next step is to brown the beef. A uh, little bit of oil in the bottom. Today I'm using grapeseed oil. Uh, I like it because it has no flavor and a high smoke point. If I had any rendered beef fat, that would be my first choice for this. Um, this is my second choice. But really, any fat you're comfortable with. And in goes the beef, a little at a time. You want it to brown, not boil. And of course, if you forgot the salt and pepper like I did, it's okay to put it in now. Uh, plenty of opportunities along the way to add more seasoning with a stew. This is a long, slow cook. While the meat is browning, I will prepare the vegetables. And that's uh, three or four onions, depending on how big they are. And since this is a long, slow cook, I don't bother cutting them really fine. It's a stew. I like, uh, I like all of the vegetables to be fairly large chunks. So depending on the onions, I might uh, quarter them or eighth them only. Carrots, again, really big chunks, and um, I'm not one for peeling carrots, so I just slice them into really big rounds. And same with the celery, really big chunks. Of course, your stew, cut them however you like. Uh, if you think that's too big, then cut them in half. And, um, you know, really, cooking is all about pleasing yourself. So, let's check on the beef. We could go a little bit farther. We could get a little bit more browning. Um, in this instance today, I think it's fine. A long, slow cook in the oven is going to bring out all of those flavors. Plus, some of the other stuff we're going to put in. So. Next in is some tomato paste. Um, plop that right in and get it cooking with the beef. Next up is my favorite ingredient for beef stews, and that is Marmite. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like Marmite, and I know you might have heard me say this before, um, we're going to put in a really good dollop. I hate Marmite on its own. Tastes horrible to me. Absolutely horrible to me. But you put it in something like this stew, and it just brings out all of the other flavors and makes them absolutely incredible. And as you can see, we've got some great color in there now. Um, cooking the tomato sauce with the Marmite and the beef before we put in the rest of the ingredients really helps deepen the flavor. Uh, and next in is some chicken stock. And yes, of course, if you've got homemade beef stock, use homemade beef stock. Um, I don't have any homemade beef stock, so I'm using homemade chicken stock. And my order of importance for this type of dish is homemade beef to go with beef, then homemade chicken to go with beef, and then store-bought chicken to go with beef um, before I will ever buy a box or a jar of store-bought beef stock. There's some flavor in every store-bought stock that I've ever had that I just don't like. I think it's horrible. Um, so I will always choose chicken before I choose purchased beef. Anyway, enough about that. Give this a stir, and at this point we can start adding in some of the other aromatics. So I have, uh, I have some thyme. Um, I'm gonna throw the whole sprigs in. Got a couple of cloves of garlic, and uh, 
I'm going to crush those in. So the stock and all of the beef juice has come up to a boil at this point, which is what we're looking for. So in goes the garlic. Give it a crush. Scrape it off. There you go. Um, next up is some beer, and I've got uh, I've got a local Ontario brewery stout from Broadhead Brewery, Dark Horse Stout. I think this is one of the ones we used in the 24 Beer Project. Um, there's a very famous stout from Ireland that you could use if you wanted to, but you want a really dark beer, um, low in the hops. Of course, red wine would be really good in this uh, in this stew as well. So just put in enough. Hmm, it's pretty good, guys. So now in goes the veg, um, and we just plop it in. And you'll notice um, I don't put any potatoes in my in my beef stew. I sort of go back and forth between putting potatoes in and then serving this over mashed potatoes. And I think today I'm going to serve this over mashed potatoes. Give it a stir. Uh, we'll bring this up to a boil. I feel like I spend most of my time cleaning this kitchen. Um, and I just saw a Leon Lush video on uh, on how cleaning videos clean up on YouTube. So I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd throw in a little bit of cleaning for him. This has come to a boil now. And um, we'll put on a lid and put that in a low oven, 300, 325 uh, for three or four hours. And of course, this could be done in a crock pot or a slow cooker, uh, especially if you have one of the ones with a metal insert that you can brown. Um, but if you have one that you can't brown, probably not all that terribly important. You'll get almost the same flavor just by throwing everything in and turning it on for 10 hours. Anyway, come on back and see what happens. So Glenn, we got two parts going on here. Yep, so this is the uh, beef stew and okay. we're gonna serve it over mashed potatoes. So oh. serve up the mashed potatoes and let's go. You know what's funny? I, uh, as a little kid, mm -hmm. every Friday night, the the Family that took care of me mm -hmm. after school, this is what they would serve. Mashed potato and, and... Mashed potatoes and a stew. It was really good. This is like a little homecoming for me. Oh, nice. So, so this this stew is really thin. The, the, the It's more soupy than stewy. It's stew because it's chunky. Uh, you could definitely thicken it up with some flour or corn starch. But then it doesn't... It just it mixes uh, in so nicely. I know. I like, I like how it flavors the mashed potatoes. Um, so this is made with a, a dark stout. Ah, well, that would explain that flavor, mm -hmm. the dark stout. Mm. That mashed potato recipe is quite possibly the best mashed potato recipe the world has ever known. Ever known? Ever did known. Did you make that recipe, Glenn? I did. Oh, good for you. I did. <laughs> it's pretty good. They're pretty good mashed potatoes. So there's a lot of things you could do with this stew. At the end, you could put in peas and corn oh, yeah. if you wanted if you wanted extra vegetables. Um, it, you could change the flavoring. I mean, it's. You could put the potatoes in it, even though I like it served over mashed potatoes. Mm hmm. I think the stout really adds to it. It does. Don't look at the panettone. I can't yeah. ask about the panettone? This is about the stew. Don't ask <laughs> but, about the panettone. But it's right there, Glenn. <laughs> when do we get to go to the panettone? We'll go there next. Okay. We have to have dinner first. So give this a try. Um, I think you'd really like it. <laughs> 